In at the end. Here we are. Episode 7, Season 1. Down Neck. Down Neck. What to talk about. It's a great episode. Where do you want to start? Yeah, no, I just, I do want to start with just kind of commenting on how this episode stands out Mm -hmm. in terms of some of the, like, just the structure, the fact that we have these flashbacks. I can't remember a ton of other episodes with flashbacks. Good point. I know we see... (sighs) There's not too much of it. There's not too much. And this one has it definitely the most out of any other episode that we see. Um, And I think that these writers and the director are trying to make a statement with that and i think that you know these writers robin green and mitchell burgess this is where we see them writing for the first time and they go on to write so many episodes like 22 episodes and they actually make it past the first season which a lot of the writers from the first season didn't um which is is really interesting because i think they start to get the core of answering these questions that The Sopranos is putting out there. Well, this is a huge episode for that, right? Like, we really deal with the issue of, like, how do you become who you are? Yeah. Um, Which, again, comes up again and again. And also, is that something that's changeable, right? Like, Melfi has these comments, like, do you believe that everything is preordained, right? Yeah. So I think this this episode really deals um, he- quite heavily, in, in a lot of ways, heavily with these issues that continue to come up again and again, but in such an amazing way. I just yeah, really... Yeah, and such a central question of this show, and that comes up, you know, in this episode, you are born to this shit, you are what you are. Yeah. And, you know, is that true? You know, Melfi talks about, well, this is America. Yeah. You know, within that framework, you have the ability to choose. And that's what the show is investigating. Yeah. And it's great to see close up the family relationships of the generation before the nuclear soprano family that we're, we've been living in so far. Yeah, I think the flashbacks are amazing. There was maybe something like a little bit off-putting. Like it does kind of put you, it makes you a little bit uncomfortable, right? Just because we're not used to seeing this and it's to, it's colored totally differently. We see this like adorable little guy who plays young Tony Soprano. Yeah. Um, it really does evoke a sense of a different time and then we have these kind of like strange cuts as Tony is remembering them so yeah. there is something um, yeah I mean off-putting I think is the right word but it's not in a negative sense it just kind of throws you a little bit mm-hmm. and you're thrown into this other world that is a you know is kind of over you know this overarching specter if you want to call it that of the rest of the show but yeah. we're actually seeing it we're not just kind of yeah. hearing stories about it or um, having memories be talked about like at the dinner table with yes. Junior and Livia we're actually seeing these yeah. things happen and so that's uncomfortable right like yeah. revisiting the past in that way is uncomfortable we also see how different characters see the past differently right we see like that's through Tony's memory and Tony's totally. perspective but then we have Livia later on in the episode quote unquote remembering yeah. something happening really differently totally right so well, it, I, think, I just loved it yeah I and it I think great. it's it's imperfect and we have Tony as a narrator and he's unreliable again and I think the edits that they use these like fades to white or these weird well, swish it's a, edits it's a freeze like it's a freeze and yeah. then fade it's to very white. dated actually and I think yeah. that almost kind of relates to feeling like you're in that time and place yeah definitely but we definitely get a feeling for how things were but we have to realize that it's not perfect. We aren't actually watching it as it happened. We're still watching from the perspective of 1999. It's a recollection of what happened. Mm-hmm. And that's imperfect. Mm-hmm. But that's what these characters have to grapple with. And when the show's always talking about, you know, the inability to revisit the past and to fix these things and, you know, kind of being yeah. in the moment, that's kind of all we have. It's this imperfect recollection yeah. of how those things transpired. Which is also central to the show, right? And we've talked about that already in past episodes, and we'll continue to talk about that as the series goes on it's i think it's executed here in a pretty awesome way the only thing that kind of the only part of it with flashbacks that i didn't really like was those like slight Mm. i don't even call them flashbacks they were like kind of that electrical sounding noise you know like and then you see meadow (laughs) well the best way i can describe it it's funny Um, it's yeah i mean that technique doesn't always work that well i mean we can remember what happened you know two episodes ago and call it yeah i mean it really hammered it home like we're seeing and i think something i want to talk about maybe this episode is 
the piece where Tony talks about his two kids and talks yeah. about like, oh, it's like like father, like son, or what about daddy's little girl? So yeah. it does, even though this episode is focused a lot on AJ, it does connect us. Like there are a lot of times in the episode where it also connects us to Meadow, even though yeah. we, we don't, we yeah. see her for a brief yeah. moment totally. in the episode. Yeah. No, and I feel like, yeah, that's an imperfect use of a flashback. It reminds me of the first episode of The Wire when you have the witness testifying against, I think it's Bird. Oh, and yeah. then you have David Simon, like, went on record. Or later, I think he was saying that, like, he never wanted to do it, but HBO forced him because the show was too confusing. Right. <laughs> Which it was. <laughs> Which was a very confusing first episode if you haven't watched it before. But, you know, I think in a first season of a show, too, like, a show is creating its own language. And I think this show is doing that. And it's amazing how well they use the flashback, which I think is probably a device in film that's used the worst yeah. a lot of the time. And they do kind of nail it. But yeah, you know, there's kind of like a yeah. slight moment where you question if it was necessary. I think they I think they do a flashback like that later on with Pussy. They do. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it was familiar in that sense. Yeah. So it is something that they kind of revisit. And I there's just also did, a I just flashback to it. being in nature, I think, in a conversation near the end. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have to pay So it happened. So there is yeah. some, there is some consistency, but, you know, it, it's, you know, it's it's good. Yeah. So where do you want to start in terms of this episode? Well, let's kind of look at this episode through its central question. And for me, you know, there's a question from Melfi that kind of sums it up. And she asked Tony, you know, you don't see his behavior as out of the ord or out of the norm. Right. And I think that's kind of the question. Is AJ just being a rascal or is he, you know, emulating his father's criminality and beginning a path towards the same place, much like Tony did in terms of emulating the path of his own father? So, and it's interesting, that very first scene where they steal the sacramental wine as they're leaving the church and very beginning of the episode we see saint jude yeah who's the patron saint of lost causes yeah so we have to wonder how do you know that information mr non-religious man looking it up yeah. <laughs> well they <laughs> the definitely internet. They, they put the words saint jude so large that yeah, like, you to, have you have to pay attention had to, to check it. yeah so yeah i mean i think this episode is is pretty thematic it's pretty unified in kind of examining that topic mm-hmm what yeah. is our relationship to what our parents have done? Can we, do we have free will to kind of get away from that? Yeah. And I think a lot of things that happen in this episode are all kind of structured around that central yeah. question. Well, and what happens when we actually start to understand who our parents are as people and psychological beings as well, right? So yeah. definitely there's commentary on Livia, for example, and her mental state, right? And course that comes from her parents so it yeah. is this kind of like intergenerational transmission of yeah. mental illness or you know other certain kind of like behavioral dispositions yeah. Yeah. for sure ideas you know and i liked in that um we had the scene pretty early on and we had a uh, an edit and we basically kind of like went actually it was a swish edit so kind of like one of those stylized edits that went to carmel and tony with AJ in the meeting on his drinking with the school psychologist right. and the priest. Is that correct? If he has if he has a white collar, is he a priest? I think he is a priest, but he's okay. also like the head priest of the school or okay. something. Okay, head priest. Yeah. Head priest. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have them saying that AJ's having trouble following the rules and weighing the consequences. Mm -hmm. And obviously... <laughs> Tony, like, Tony, looks so far... Like, yeah. is, like, And they bring that. focus to that. It's yeah. obviously weighing on him. Well, those shots all through that part, like, they Incredible. focus on that dweeby psychiatrist yeah. and his, like, s weird smiling face. Amazing acting, too. I love yeah. what Edie Falco and James Gandolfini do. You know, there's the episode where he's, the psychologist says, in many respects, AJ is a normal kid. And then he goes on to have this kind of in a nice comment about yeah, him. Yeah, they're kind of and like proud of him. During, well, during that statement, you see Carmela just looking at him kind of like guarded, calling about him as a nice kid, kind of knowing that like something bad is coming. Yeah. Very defensive, very distant. And then as he says that nice comment, her eyes kind of like soften, the guards mm -hmm. kind of like let down. And similarly, when ADD is brought up, when we watch James Gandolfini's face, his eyes kind of dart around the room in a very ADD-like way. Yeah, but it's but he's was looking away in the whole time before that. He was like actively not looking at the psychiatrist or whatever he is. And he then like looks at him and kind of, I mean, similarly to how Carmela kind of smiled a little bit when she heard the nice things about AJ, 
he his voice or his eyes become joyful in that as well like and he starts to nod and he does like I, I I know the part you're talking about when he's kind of darting around but Carmela says um I always knew there was something right and then from there they start to jump into talking about um it being an illness right so Tony brings up this idea of like oh he'll he'll know the consequences when he gets home totally and, and start we start to see these hints of this violence that you know like you know violent disciplinary measures or whatever you want yeah. to call it um and then they start to talk about well would you hit someone who's sick mm -hmm. right which is interesting because that brings up polio which then comes up at a couple places in the episode well when you hit somebody who's sick will you hit somebody with polio is what carmela says right and then later in the um appointment with Melfi, he talks about, you know, he brings up polio again. It kind of has these strains. But similarly, we start to see the strains of, um, you know, violence within the family, violence responding to what children are doing for discipline. And we start to see that with Livia and Junior talking about the way things were, the flashbacks, Tony's recollection of growing up and how, you know, the children were hit and how that was a disciplinary measure as well. Mm-hmm. Um... I was going to kind of focus in on how we treat mental illness as opposed to like typical illnesses, right? So is it something that is treated differently in our society? I think definitely it is, right? And people kind of draw these boundaries of, well, I, would, I wouldn't hit someone with polio, right. but that might be appropriate. And we see that these are all people who are dealing with mental illness. I mean, everybody deals with their mental health. And so these are all people who are dealing with these pretty complex feelings and complex um, kind of pathology in some ways. And historically, I think in the Soprano family, it has been dealt with with violence, right? So yeah. again, we'll talk about parenting probably a little bit later, but um, you know, how does Tony know better than how to give consequences when that was, those were the consequences that he was dealt as a totally. kid? Totally. And that's what he, that's what he saw too. I mean, if we see that that see that scene where he misses his bus and he goes out and he sees his dad and Junior beating up that man, and you know, like that's his first interaction with casual violence that mm -hmm. ends up being such a major part of his life. And actually, one thing that I loved in that scene too is they have a a shot of a woman holding her baby in the window, watching as mm -hmm. that violence kind of unfolds. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also looking at the kind of like collateral damage of yeah. the violence that the mob is engaging in and how not only are the fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, the whole family dynamic being influenced by the introduction of casual violence like this, but it's actually affecting the upbringing of other families too. Totally. And for people who grew up in that down neck area, you know, which references the title where Tony grew up and was in those flashback scenes, other families are impacted by that. Oh, yeah. So it really just, it reaches out, and there's such a huge impact from that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Well, and then in the scene that kind of happens from there, um, well, I guess it's like the, we have the dinner scene where Livia and Soprano are there. I love that scene. They start to talk about Tony, right? This is before our first our first flashback, right? We first get these stories being tell, told at the dinner table, right? And so we get this, you know, perspective into Tony's, um, childhood from other people, right? Because yeah. then we just see it from his. But after that scene, we have a scene with Melfi, and she says, do you see his behavior, AJ's behavior, as a reflection of your own? And so I think that's a big, yeah. you know, a big topic in here, like how are people reflections of their parents? We see it later on when Tony and Carmela are, are speaking about it, right? And they talk about, um, you know, Car he, he accuses Carmela of blaming him for AJ's issues, right? Yeah. And he brings up that topic, well, you know what they say, like father, like son. And, you know, so, and then he says, but what about being daddy's little girl, right? Yeah. So we see in terms of, you know, nature versus nurture, right? We see these two siblings. Um, well, I mean, we see Janice and Tony. We'll talk maybe about Janice and Tony later on. But we see these two siblings, right? We see Meadow and AJ. They're both, they're different, right? They both grew up in the same household. They both share, you know, genetic material, if you want to call it that. But they, you know, they turn out quite differently. Now, 
the way that Carmela and Tony are talking about Meadow doesn't, you know, Tony mentions her solo in the in the choir, which yeah. she was high out of her mind for, right? So they, you know, they 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 can be blind to some of the issues that are going on with Meadow, and we, right. we see some of those later on. But it is interesting in terms of that concept of nature versus nurture, which comes up kind of throughout the episode as well. Like, how what's genetics? What's totally. our environment? Um, Melfi talks about. Um, genetic predispositions, right? So mm -hmm. to, say, to just say <laughs> those are just predispositions, it doesn't like people still have choice within mm -hmm. those, right? Right. So I thought that genetic that... predispositions versus genetical, which is what Tony Gen says. Genetical, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Which is interesting too to think about Melfi introducing this idea of no, you do have choice, and Tony just assuming no, you cannot break this cycle. Yeah. You are what you are. Yeah. It's genetical. Well, and I, <laughs> it's genetical. <laughs> Yeah, well, we do see that with Tony, right? Like, we, he doesn't take a lot of ownership for his shit. No. He puts everything onto everyone else. And even Livia captures that, right? Like, she talks about, oh, therapy, that's what people go to when they're looking for something to blame for their, um, for their it's issues. It's a racket by the Jews. <laughs> yeah, it's just a racket for the Jews. She has to look but, around before she says that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. She, she, <laughs> she's she's least... classic in this episode. But she's but she's saying that, right? Like, mm -hmm. that is why a lot of people go to therapy. And that's, you know, especially psychotherapy, that's kind of the function of that type of therapy is to look for these underlying issues. And, I mean, if you get really Freudian, it's all based on your parental relationships, yeah. right? So... And, you know, in the same way, like, so, you know, Tony does talk about his mother in that she was right. Like she was. Yes. But know. there's something fascinating about that. Yeah. We have Livia fixated on. He goes yeah. and he talks about his yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah. And then in this episode, when we go and actually visit the scenes between Tony and Melfi, he's focused on his father mostly for yes. a lot of it. Like, like shortly yeah. after it's contra you know, it's contrasted to that idea that he's talking about his mother. And, you know, Livia says he's, you know. He's supposed to talk about horrible things and mm -hmm. and the actual pain that he was reflecting on in this episode was with his father not bringing him to Rideland. Yeah. I mean, they do, there is a scene with Livia putting a fork, threatening to put a fork in his eye. And threatening to smother him. But actually, he kind of blows that off. He says totally. she was stressed, you know, she yeah. had a lot on her plate. He actually doesn't engage in that. He's engaging in talking about his father. Yeah. No, totally. Let's come back to that for a second. But I just... I the comparison that I was thinking of was just in terms of AJ, right? So we have like Tony's therapy that Tony engages in that is very like, is seeking something to kind of blame his panic attacks on, right? It is, it is kind of seeking that kind of explanation. And then we have AJ, right? And again, with their kind of relief of the diagnosis of ADD, they're looking for something to blame on AJ that's not themselves too, right? Like they don't want to take, Carmela and Tony don't want to take ownership for AJ's issues. Totally. And Carmela maybe does a slightly bigger, better job than Tony does, right? Like at least she kind of takes some ownership for that she raised. Researches ADD. Well, yeah, yeah. She, she tries to look <laughs> into it with some yeah. books, but she also says that line where she's like, I have two eyes and Tony mm -hmm. says like, True. you know, like you blame it on staying with me or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. um, but he's pretty, even though he has a pretty frank discussion with AJ about, you know, what he's talking about in therapy, it's still all self-serving, right? It's to find mm -hmm. out whether he's listed on these websites right. That's a fast, more yeah. than it is to like actually like in his questions, they seem so well-meaning. It's like, well, what did you talk about? It seems like he's trying to engage AJ. Yeah on these things, but he's really just trying to like find out what AJ knows and. <laughs> there were a couple things in that yeah. scene that I absolutely loved. First of all, that they're replacing the tire and that's where it's happening. Yeah. In his flashback when he goes into the trunk yeah. and he's resting Breaks on a spare tire. And then he's reflecting on that, talking about, no, we, we switch tires in this family. It's all so linked. Yeah. His past, his recollections of the past and what's critical to his subconscious and his psyche. It's yeah, it's fascinating. In fact, also yeah, I love like Tony was a savvy enough kid to <laughs> break into his his dad's yeah. trunk, be able to kind of jerry rig the, yeah. the lock, get in. In some ways, actually, that really contrasts him to AJ. I actually think yeah, he there was are like a some more differences. Criminal. <laughs> I think AJ, yeah, well, I think AJ too is like 
has been pampered and is a part of a generation that actually is more detached from those kind of blue collar roots mm. or what have you mm. of being able to replace your own tire. I mean, it's like yeah. way over AJ's head. He's That's a good point. He's not going to be replacing tires no. in his life. I wonder, do because when he gets that car, I wonder if we ever see a moment like that. That would be funny. Yeah. Um, I love that, though. I love that aspect of tying in as things that we see in the flashbacks yeah. and in the present and how it's critical to all these characters and all just kind of weaves in and out. That's that's a good one. I thought it was interesting, too, where they were talking. There was two, um, actually one in that scene where Tony talks about we're spending all this money and he's kind of, you know, he doesn't like the psychologist privilege that AJ brings right. up, which obviously is important to him. He requires that. Yeah. But he says, we're spending money. We should be able to know what you're talking about. Yeah. In a very similar way to Livia saying, it's ridiculous that you were suspended yeah. as if it's some for sort of conspiracy. For all the money school. you give to the school. Those kinds of attitudes and the way they filter down from the generations and within that family oh, to yeah. kind of create these characters. Yeah. No, it's, oh, yeah. That's, that's actually a really good observation. I was going to go into, like, you were talking about Tony reflecting on his own history, right, and how that shapes him. And then, of course, we know that Tony is someone who enjoys history, right? Totally. Um, he watches history shows. I don't really know. I don't know if you have any ideas on the significance. I think that the clip was about Pearl Harbor. Oh, oh I wasn't paying no, I probably. I think so. It I looks. Think like, so? It looks like it, but, well, yeah, I don't know. not definitive. Um, so I couldn't figure out if, what kind of impact that or what kind of message they were trying to send there besides kind of these messages that Tony is kind of outwardly and I think inwardly as well someone who's interested in history but I don't think that Tony has any understanding you know we, we start to see any understanding of kind of how his own history has made him who he is he can talk yes. about these memories mm. and he brushes them off, kind of like you said before, like with the stuff with Livia, right? Like he kind of brushes them off. He sees his father still as this great guy who everyone loved, yeah. who loved seafood, who, right. um, which is interesting in terms of other seafood references we've had before. Yeah. But who, you know, who used his belt as his favorite child mm -hmm. development tool. I love that That's nice. line. That's a nice thing to remember about your dad. Um, that, well, especially as like an early childhood person. The, the right. fact that he called it a child development tool, I thought was really funny. His um, favorite one. Yeah, his favorite one. So, But he's not able to kind of like um, Melfi says, like he who doesn't understand history is doomed to repeat mm. it, right? So... I don't know if he really has a drive to understand it or not. Well, very interesting. I think that this becomes a key part of this episode. I think, I think so. that last scene is really interesting where he's in the basement, he's exercising, and he's watching history. Those are Which, two very kind of like productive, yeah. um, kind of, yeah, like very positive activities to be engaging in, especially for Tony Soprano. Yeah. And then what does he do? He gets up, he goes upstairs, he talks to AJ, and he makes a bunch of ice cream sundaes, which for me is really fascinating because in that scene, not only is he exercising and watching the History Channel, which is kind of an indicator of these positive interests that he has yeah. that maybe reflect somebody who he could have been. He does have these positive attributes and maybe he could have been somebody who engaged with society in a much more positive way. He goes upstairs and AJ is doing his homework, his government homework. Yeah. And what does he do? <laughs> maybe the first scene in the entire show so far, where Tony and AJ, the two male characters in the family, are really engaging in positive, kind of like beneficial activities for themselves. And he goes and he makes these giant ice cream sundaes that they eat. And, you know, that's an endearing moment. Yeah. But it's interesting, given that he, he was recalling this horrible experience of going to Rideland, seeing his members of his family arrested, mm -hmm. going home. Seeing someone shot. Seeing somebody shot. Also dealing with these feelings of, you know, being pushed off by his family, not being wanted by his dad when he went to Rideland with his sister. It's heartbreaking for a kid. And then he goes home, and what does his dad bring him? Cherry vanilla ice cream. Yum. So what's Tony taking away from the history of that? Mm -hmm. He's... What did he learn from his history and this big psychological breakthrough 
what he takes from it at the end is to give his kid ice cream. Yeah. So we're just repeating the same or cycle. does he even recognize that that's something, you know what I mean? Like, does he even recognize that that's something that he's recreating? Or is that kind of just so deep inside of no, him, No, he right? doesn't, he doesn't recognize it, but we can. Yeah. And no, David exactly. Chase does. Well, of course he does, right? And that's the thing about highlighting that and showing that, right? Tony's not speaking these words. We're seeing how it looks in his head. Yeah. So it's, I, I just think it's so well done. And these threads that go through are, so, I mean, so yeah. important. Everything is, there's yeah, so, so we, we're probably yeah. missing so many other elements. Oh, there's a that, bunch. I, I also loved when he's playing catch with Junior, you know, and he's yeah. recalling it as this kind of nice childhood memory. Yeah. And it kind of sets the scene of, you know, his childhood there at yeah. a kind of happier time or whatever but you know that's brought up against him by junior all those times i played catch yeah so these events are very complicated we should catch a game together we should catch a game Ooh. yeah double entendre yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah it's so much i want to talk a little bit about janice who is a mm -hmm. character who we I, meet first as a young child and we don't meet her as an adult until next season and she's arguably just like one of the m most horrible characters in the whole show. <laughs> she is just. That's a tough position. It That's is. A, yeah. She is one of the worst people in the whole show, right? Once we kind of lose Livia, yeah. Yeah. we gain Janice. And it's like, oh God, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd rather deal with Livia's bullshit. Yeah. But we see Janice here as a kid. And, you know, we could, t like, I think actually the child actress or actor plays the adult Janice very well. I don't know if they knew who they were going to have as Janice <laughs> later on. But we see her psychological impact, right? So yeah. like, and Tony doesn't really focus in on that or acknowledge that even really, but she was used as a front for her dad's yeah. crime, right? And so he would use her and bring her, which like, again, on the outside, kind of like making the ice cream sundaes, on the outside, how lovely this father and daughter are driving off in their convertible, you know, like, they're holding hands mm -hmm. at one point, right? And mm -hmm. they're and he's bringing her for this day, and she's happy. She flips Tony off, like she's. Well, that like, I found interesting in terms of nature versus nurture. Yeah. <laughs> it's in her nature already to be flipping off Tony yeah. and us. And you us, know. yeah. Yeah, but but then like think about the impact of that, right? Like she doesn't know Tony's there watching this go down either, but she's you know distraught she runs up to johnny mm -hmm. boy and is like grabbing onto yeah. him right so think about what that's done for her mm -hmm. you know for her and her development which is terrible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i also can't wait till she shows up the other thing that i just a connection that i thought was really interesting and i don't think we've seen tony watching westerns yet maybe that's mm. in later seasons but i forgot that johnny boy had been in in prison when when Tony was young and I didn't I forgot the line it's like kind of like a mm. quick a passing quick line mm. but they but he says they told me that he was in Montana being a cowboy mm -hmm. so that's an interesting one too I kind of I liked that yeah no it's it's fascinating to think about how those things would kind of like ruminate in Tony's subconscious and influence yeah. what he's drawn to and what he's interested in yeah um I'm trying to think what else there was well. There's a lot. But there's a lot of these like little things. I just there's a lot of little things. Yeah, you know, another another little thing that I saw that has a thread to other episodes. Yeah, is when Livia's saying, you know, you better catch the bus. You you don't want to walk through the colored neighborhood too, right. which is such a messed up attitude. <laughs> and what's what we see from it though is the impact that that kind of attitude and prejudice and racism has on Tony because throughout the rest of the the series, he has really antiquated backwards views on race. Yeah. And he's very prejudiced, but we're kind of given a window into Livia's character and how that's kind of seeped into Tony's character. Yeah, well, and, but we, and we see Tony's experience, right? We see him watching those riots on TV, right? Which was in a very mm -hmm. black neighborhood of New Jersey yeah. at the time, right? So it kind of captures the civil rights issues that were going on and how Tony as a kid as a white kid would yeah. have interpreted those and then we see his little interaction with Michael B. Jordan and his friends ah Michael B. Jordan from The yeah. Wire another Wire they love alumni. to <laughs> HBO has people who they just really love yeah but yeah young Michael B. Jordan also and his now pals. now a big star in Fahrenheit and we have what a I can't even <laughs> oh my god for, for, yeah not good not, not a good Ray Bradbury interpretation 
we can't even. We go won't there. even go there. We're not gonna talk about this on this. Um, <laughs> but we see his interaction with these boys who who start chasing him for dropping garbage on the street. Yeah. Right? And we see Tony's consumerism, right? Just like leaving his garbage everywhere yeah. and then like running away from these, you know, three little black boys who are yeah. who are chasing him. We also see both of their reactions to the cops, mm -hmm. which is really interesting, interesting, right? Like those boys turn and run. Yeah. Whereas Tony, you know, has privilege, right? Yeah. Like even though Livia says, oh, the police are always picking on the and Italians. The Italians. <laughs> right? no, like, you're right. Yeah. Like the police are actually picking on other people A way lot worse. More. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I believe that's what those riots were about. I think it was about like police brutality and right. stuff like that on, on some level. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting. Well, and we've seen thing. it play out in an early earlier episode too with the I think Trinidadian nurse at Livia's right. house who She's... Livia is just awful to her and yeah. full of prejudice but so is Tony and he comes and he says you know like now I want you to first thing he says is like no ganja in the house <laughs> just like dude oh my god come on yeah yeah so he has these kind of ingrained views of 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 races and cultures um that comes from his upbringing that just like he doesn't see everybody the same way. And we see it later on with Meadow and her, you know, later boyfriend. So it's interesting how it yeah. kind of keeps on getting reintroduced. Yeah. Well, it's also, so this whole thing is all interesting in terms of, you know, everyone's current psychological states, right? But I think in, especially in terms of Tony and his quote unquote panic attacks or whatever they really are, um, I thought it was interesting how he commented I think it like in it might have been the same session to Melfi or at, you know maybe two separate sessions. He says he remembers exactly how he felt in the pit of his stomach, mm -hmm. like that he still has that like visceral reaction to something that happened. And then he also said something about feeling like his head was going to explode. Right. So we already mm -hmm. see these like kind of physical yeah um, uh, incarnations of these feelings coming out in Tony, which is interesting too definitely and yeah. then we and then you know and we see how violent livia is i mean we, we see little bits of johnny boy but again we don't probably even see him honestly because tony does have this kind of positive yeah. view of him right but we and he blames livia for not letting them go to reno mm -hmm. right uh which livia sees differently so we're right. seeing this all through these different perspectives yeah. right but we see we see Johnny Boy saying to Livia, you're just scared of your own shadow, mm -hmm. right? And so we see kind of her shut-in kind of nature, right? Mm -hmm. Like she's not a very social no. person. She's pretty paranoid yeah. uh, about stuff. And I love then, that scene of her looking at the obituaries through a magnifying glass. Yeah. For me, that was like, that perfectly kind of encapsulated who she is. It's yeah. like not only focusing on the morbid, but being so consumed with it that you're, you're dealing with that subject material and just going way too far yeah. into it and that's the world that she lives in her perspective is through the lens of a magnifying glass on the obituaries yeah that's really who she is in fact later on in the episode when tony says you would have been the real gangster if you had been born after those feminists that's really interesting i like that one yeah she brushes that one off but mm -hmm. i think she takes it as a compliment <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a this is a key moment because she finds out about you His know Tony therapy. seeing a yeah. psychiatrist. So this is really kind of propelling the plot forward. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't get a chance to tell Junior in this no, episode because Tony shows up. Yeah, but that's clear. Things are clearly getting tense there. Yeah, um, I love too in the meal scene where Livy is talking about oh you know. Um, AJ's father was the same way. He stole a car. Yeah. He stole the boat. Locks? Lotzes? Maybe Didn't put lobsters? Up. Lobsters and yeah. sold them for a buck a piece? Yeah. I'm gonna, so he sold the boat lotzes. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, a, you know, he was stealing things at 10. And again, you know, and AJ's like fascinated by this and kind of engaged. And obviously yeah. Tony's concerned about that. And that's how we're kind of like, yeah, he's it's like, early can in the we episode. Not? Yeah. You know, we're introduced to this dynamic and this, this yeah. problem. But it is really interesting to see how it's played out from generation to generation. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the whole, I mean, the whole treatment of, of therapy, I think, is so fascinating in this, right? Because it's, we can't, and even with Livia and the, and the magnifying glass, like, I think it's kind of, like, we, we can't look at ourselves through that magnifying glass, right? We can e examine others through this, and that's kind of what psychiatry and, and therapy does, yeah. right? We're looking at, 
we have someone else kind of looking at us through a magnifying mm -hmm. glass. Yeah, but, definitely. But I love when Tony in that in the last scene where they go back to get the results of AJ's um, workup or yeah. whatever of all his the bad the battery quote mm -hmm. unquote of tests, which is also a good line. They go from talking right. about. Um, they go from talking about Johnny Boy beating them to talking about a battery of tests, right? I thought yeah. that was great. But um, Tony says to the um, psychiatrist, he's not a case, he's a 13-year-old boy, mm -hmm. right? And so like the treatment of mental illness, if you want to call it that, as just an element of somebody and yeah. not, you know, not de yeah. you know, taking it out of the person. Yeah. Um, or turning someone into a case, I thought was really, yeah. was and kind of, <sighs> deep i yeah. mean he doesn't want to be seen as just this person who's in therapy he wants to be yeah. a full human yeah. being with a range of emotions and yeah. qualities and whatever you want yeah. to call it it's also interesting to examine that in terms of the progress that's made from generation to generation on these mm, ideas yeah um yeah no yeah. definitely because with aj he's 13 tony at 10 was you know all over the place stealing cars and lotzes. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I think it is lobsters. Okay, lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> Lobster thief, Tony. But, you know, we have, like, there has been progress there made in that generation. And when we look at his life compared to Meadow and AJ's life, Meadow and AJ are much more typical Americans mm -hmm. than I think Tony was. Mm -hmm. And Janice. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jen Janice were. Um, but, yeah. yeah, and also even in terms of, like, the... The kind of like horrible, horrible prejudice and racism that we see, like as bad as it, bad as it is, it does improve from the generation before. We yeah. have Livia talking about, you know, not walking through the colored neighborhood, talking about the psychiatry being a racket for the Jews. Yeah. Which I think is also fascinating that psychiatry is such a like central part of this show and to see how those two generations, the golden generation and the generation that's kind of fully adult in the late 90s mm -hmm. views it and the stigma has kind of been erased yeah well you even see it further because at the, in the last scene with aj and tony he says to tony i'm depressed mm -hmm. which is not something tony would ever say about himself right right and so we see it kind of trickle down in that sense too and i see it now like even between me as a 30 ish year old and my students who i teach right. who are 20 they're like we're so much more able to talk about uh, mental health issues openly now, so it's you. You definitely see it. Yeah, in definitely. Society. Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was a few more kind of like things that kind of get carried through these threads. I think we've mm -hmm. definitely seen a lot of like introducing something in this episode and then seeing it manifest itself in different ways multiple times. Mm -hmm. But there's also things that manifest themselves outside of this episode too. You know, Olivia talking about I'd rather smother them with a pillow. Mm -hmm. Their kids. Um, you know, sorry, her kids and like this obsession with the morbid. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, that's something that we throwing babies out of windows earlier. We see that again later. And even perhaps in that family, a potential smothering of a pillow at some point, which is interesting mm -hmm. later on in the season. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of that. So it does, which is something, you know, that like that was from a flashback. So that's Tony remembering that. Yeah. Very, very same interesting. With, same with um, Livia saying, um, when Tony's li like when Tony's little, she says, "You're driving me crazy," mm -hmm. right? So like kind of putting mm -hmm. like her. Well, again, this is a kind of aside from what you're talking about, but kind of putting the blame for your own yeah. pathology onto other people. Mm -hmm. I also yeah, well. I love the deflection too in um, Melfi's session where, um, you know, she she addresses with uh, Tony, "Are you worried about AJ finding out about what you do?" Right, and he immediately, which is a wild. It, like change of topic but you know he talks about what about those chemical companies you know dropping mm -hmm. all the chemicals in the river yeah. which is amazing because in season six there's a lot of focus on Tony and the crew dropping asbestos into yeah. the river so I think what's amazing about this show is when they introduce something they value it they appreciate it and it often comes back and yeah. they build on those things so nothing's really wasted ne never i don't think yeah well even the other one i was thinking about was kind of the when they were playing um white rabbit over two of the scenes mm. in the episode one of them was tony taking drugs and then one of them was them eating ice cream like consuming mm -hmm. and we know there's a lot of links in this show like to show about consumption yes um with food but also to show about like i don't know like <laughs> 
pushing down your emotions using mm -hmm. food, like kind yeah. of like treating it as a drug or treating yeah. it as a treatment for yeah. something. So, I, and we know that one starts to get a little more heavy handed with the food yeah. imagery. Yeah. One of the other moments I thought was great, just again, these kind of like reflections of each other um, in different parts of the episode or these threads. Um, he, early in the episode, asks Silvio and Pussy for like advice mm -hmm. on AJ, right? Like, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, teens. And Silvio, I wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> Talking about his daughter. So, in the yeah, Sylvia is talking about his daughter who thinks that the strip club is mm -hmm. anti feminist. Yeah. Um, and then they say something like, it's hard to raise kids in an information age, yeah. which I think is really funny. Yeah. But then he also, then in Melfi's office, when he's talking about genetics, right? And mm -hmm. he's talking about um, be things being all genetical. Mm -hmm. But then he talks about how, like, Pussy's a gangster, but two of his kids are going to yeah. Vassar, Vill Villanova or, or something. Villanova. Yeah. Um, and then he talks about some millionaire guy who is raising some, you know, right. some murderers. murderers. Or, yeah. And that's when he brings up um, that maybe he could have been selling patio furniture, patio furniture in San Diego. Very interesting. That yeah. comes up a lot. Yeah. And so I was thinking about, you know, do we see Tony in any of those flashbacks interacting with patio furniture where it would have nestled into his subconscious? Yeah, not in those flashbacks, I don't think. But I think we do see patio but furniture. By the pool, you know, yeah. especially in the first episodes. Yeah. You know, that's definitely like a, ref a reflective space like, for him. Yeah. There may be scenes outside of shops or something, mm -hmm. like those kind of strip molly kind of yep. scenes. Maybe yep. we'll have to pay attention to that. Yeah. I loved um, in the beginning, too, thinking about family and, and being father, being father to a son and thinking about how your role in shaping the personality of mm -hmm. the child. Uh, it was interesting. In a first scene, you know, with AJ, talking about AJ and Tony, it cuts to the construction scene at the very beginning, and Tony's first line from the edit is, hey, how's the boy? Mm. Um, talking about Christopher. Mm. And so, I've, you know, the family extends outside of the immediate right. nuclear family. We have Junior saying boys will be boys. Mm -hmm. We have him talking about, like, how much he loves his Uncle Jackie yeah. later on, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, it is a, a family, this, well, yeah. this thing of theirs. Yeah. And it's interesting to think to see though because I think Tony it's complicated. He does have a father relationship to Christopher and in many ways he embraces that well he does he embraces that Christopher is a part of the mafia. Yeah. And he wants him to succeed. And he's a father to him in a way that he doesn't want to be to AJ, but mm. he really has two sons. Mm. And I think they're both important to him and he has different values and outlooks on who they are and who he thinks they can be. But it's fascinating to see him engage with both of them. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, so this is a little out of left field, but the other, one of those other threads that I thought was well done by the team was when AJ's in the psychiatrist's office and they're giving him that kind of like picture association mm -hmm. test, right? Um, and so we see him show a picture of a horse and yeah. a barn, mm -hmm. which is makes me think of, you know, late, definitely later. Piomai. Piomai and, and later kind of interactions that Tony has with horses yeah. and animals generally. But also with when Tony was looking at the art piece outside of Melfi's office with that barn and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And Hesh's horse farm. Totally. That he was just at. Yeah. yeah. So I thought Before that was. Before he gave a, him back his money. I mean, that was a. That was a choice they made, right? I don't yeah. even know if that's even one of the cards that is yeah. in those. Well, what will tests. AJ's relationship with horses be? Sure, and nature and all those other things. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, it's it's interesting because he says, where's the guy feeding him? But then it quickly turns into South Park. Yeah, maybe he's watching South Park. I can understand. You know, we should, prob I should, pr you know, we should probably be doing a, a podcast on South Park. If there's any show I've seen more than Sopranos, it might be South Park. Okay. I think be. it's, uh, you know, another show I've probably seen every episode. After this many do, times. After we do this for whatever. A deep dive analysis, obsessive analysis of South Park. 40 more weeks or whatever <laughs> we have. We can do all 20 plus seasons. Yeah. Um, One thing I did want to talk about was the, Melfi responding to Tony's advances in the last episode. Yeah. That's huge because I think there's something really interesting going on here. For me, these psychiatry sessions is kind of bringing together these aspects of family, these aspects of business, and these aspects of romance mm. for Tony in one place, which mm. we almost never yeah. see. They're separate lives he for him. separate lives. And yet he's engaging all of them with Melfi. And it's like this crazy kind of 
confluence of all those things when he's talking to her. And it's kind of scary because he's kind of trying to make her feel bad about talking about the 24 year old girlfriend. So How old are you? Yeah. You know, in that, but he needs advice on AJ and he quickly goes to that. But he's using her, his, her advice for his business ventures. It's really a lot. Like, yeah. that's really where everything comes together. It's maybe the that's only really space where that happens. And something fascinating is in that scene right after Tony's made the advances, he goes back to therapy. She's wearing, like, a three-piece suit and wearing lipstick. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting because it's kind of protective, the clothes that she's wearing. Distancing herself It's very professional, and there's a lot of layers to separate them. Mm. And yet, at the same time, we never see her with lipstick. Yeah, she's kind of, like, dressed herself up a little bit. She kind of seems to be, like, trying to make herself look better for him. So she's a complicated she's problematic. character. She's problematic. I, I she love has, that she's problematic. And we see that she does have complicated feelings for him, and she doesn't know what they are, and she's wrestling with that. And But it's, it's really interesting to see that juxtaposition of armor and also femininity and, mm. and trying to make herself up to mm. look different for him. Well, yeah. More think, sexual. It's very weird. Yeah, that was that was really interesting. And even just the way she brought it up was interesting. Like, she's looking for something, too. And she didn't visibly show that she was hurt by his comments, but his comments were so cruel. Yeah. And he's never, like, in even just in the last episode, he, um, he like, makes up part of the story where Irina had thrown the candle at him. Mm -hmm. He blames that on Carmela. And now in this episode, he's like, well, I already have a girlfriend. She's 24. Yep. And so he was like trying to protect that before. Yeah. And then something about yeah. her being up front and asking him that question led him to be so cruel. Yeah. It was interesting too, the next session they have, now Melfi has been kind of disarmed or something by the conversation, feeling that it's safer. She's not wearing this three-piece suit. She's wearing kind of more of like a- Her skirt Like suit, blazer. like a suit blazer or something. Yeah. But it's interesting because she goes back to having this short skirt, which there's a focus on her legs, I think, in mm -hmm. this in this show. You, you like to focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> love, love it. <laughs> no, but I think it's intentional. There is a sexual, yeah. aspect to the meetings to the sessions and sure. like i said like that part of tony's life is secret but he's engaging in all these things yeah and there is a weird tension between him and dr melfi sure and i think clothing can communicate the dynamics between them mm -hmm. well there was one scene where he was wearing all black like a black shirt and black pants yeah and she was wearing all beige like even her shoes were mm -hmm. beige yeah. So there's definitely stuff with colors there. Yeah. Carmela does the same thing though. Carmela dresses very differently and puts herself together very differently mm -hmm. in these different contexts. Like so when you see her mm -hmm. going like in for the principal's meeting yeah. or for into the psychiatrist's office, it's different than when she is just at home. Yes. Too. Yes. We see them in their bedroom, right? We see Tony in his you last week called them PJs. Is that but a Canadian thing? Hmm? PJs is that Canadian? No, but I think okay. he like Lisa. I think it's just like it's a, just a weird thing to say. Uh, <laughs> wife respecter tank top and <laughs> boxer shorts. Um, Tony is a wife respecter. That's for sure. Yeah. What else? What else do you think? I don't know. I think I covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to. I just have a couple other. I have a few like stray observations. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. What do you have? Uh, I was just going to comment on that scene, like the first, you know, right before we see the first flashback, where we hear Carmela's voice in the distance and we see Tony lying mm -hmm. in bed. It's after nine o'clock. Yeah. And we start to hear White Rabbit coming in and we hear her say, Anthony! And then, which mm -hmm. is Tony, yeah. and then Anthony Jr. Yeah. You can't just lie around in bed yeah. all day. Like, yeah. and we see Tony lying around in bed. Um, her voice is so you know, kind of jarring. And then he goes into his bathroom and takes the Prozac. And that's yeah. when we see that first little flashback, right? Because it was like, it's, you know, like how you yell at a child, right? Um, and then we do we do see like him outside as a child yeah. right after that. So interesting. Know, just... Was it just after nine o'clock on the clock? Yeah. Because for that focus on the clock in the end of the episode, when he's exercising, yeah. there's focus on a clock again, and now it's after 9 p.m. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's kind of a too. book ending too. Yeah, they like I didn't never notice their clock thing, but I've been noticing clocks. it this time. Yeah, a lot of clocks. Yeah, I loved the the imagery of all the students doing jumping jacks with this kind of like military precision at the very beginning. Mm. Um, everybody counting up to 10, and then AJ and his two friends just completely 
uh, as outsiders, unable to fit into that kind of status quo. Yeah, they're even like smaller than the rest of yeah. the boys. I don't know if you noticed that. Like they're yeah. like, and that's I mean, middle school is like that. But like, they're developed. They're not like as mature as some of the other kids in their class. You even see like just their size and their roundness. Like they're like pudgy children. Yeah. Versus kind of these like more developed yeah. other teenage boys. Yeah. No. Totally. Um, I thought it was interesting how when Christopher steals from the FedEx truck and Tony gets super upset about that being a federal crime and how stupid that is, he still takes the watch, the hypocrisy. Yeah, I didn't ever know. I was looking to see if we see it later on Carmela's wrist, but I, I couldn't. Yeah. I didn't see it. Reminds me of 46 Long with the suits. Yeah. It's like an inability to acknowledge your own culpability. <laughs> your own something. culpability yeah. and your lack of respect for the morals that you supposedly have. Yeah. Um, just to go back to like the racket for the Jews thing, we earlier in the first session where they're in with AJ's principal priest, um, Tony says something, he says, is it a disease or is it a way for psychiatrists to line their pockets? Mm -hmm. So that's like, again, with that transmission piece of like, you know, how these messages go down. Like, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't, like, blaming it on the Jews. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> That's good. You know, We've gotten somewhere. But it's still kind of a similar um, meaning behind it, yeah. I guess, right? <laughs> right. Uh, I, something I thought was fascinating at Rideland, yeah. when they're mm -hmm. pushing everybody into the truck, there's a clown being pushed yeah, in. Yeah, that's And talking clown. about nestling into the subconscious, like we talked about the patio furniture, to see that clown who I imagine was sad going, <laughs> going, going to prison. Jail. And then Tony referencing that in the first episode, you know, feeling like a sad clown. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I like that. Yeah, because I think this shows a lot of attention to detail on objects as symbols. Mm. And so to see that, you know, the clown to kind of be there in his childhood and then be referenced later yeah. on is really interesting. Yeah. Just another kind of aside, I love when they're at dinner and they're talking about like part of AJ's punishment is to bike over to see Livia and then she's like won't that be nice <laughs> but then <laughs> but then when he gets there she's actually like kind of excited about yeah. it right like she wants to kind of show well, him off to that friend she yeah. I think she is like she really but the friend's not buying into it the friend like calls him fat and asks <laughs> why he's not in school like yeah. kind of like calls her out on her bullshit yeah um, and then, of course, we get the confession about It's interesting to think about. Livia actually does have some endearing characteristics. Sure. In, in some way, she is kind of like, she's crazy and so negative. But there are these, like, shreds of humanity and being, like, a normal grandmother. Yeah. And, like, she, you know, she wants to play Scrabble. She wants to show off Tony, my son, in, yeah. you know, the previous episode. She is excited when her grandson comes. Yeah. And it's just sad that we never get to kind of, like, unlock that humanity yeah, yeah. It, no yeah well we see and we see early like remember with the picture hanging in that one episode the picture they're hanging up is of aj right yeah so yeah anyways yeah and my, my last thing is just thinking that in therapy it's interesting because it's the first time where i feel like they're actually getting somewhere mm -hmm. melfi asked some great questions yeah this episode, like really deep questions yeah. about predispositions and about like fate and yeah. those kind of things and thinking about psychoanalysis getting at these kind of like underlying you know feelings and i'm no psychoanalyst expert but getting at the subconscious and these kind of like freudian ideas of what is influencing you and your behavior from a root level mm. they're really starting to get at that from tony's childhood and i don't know if they've gotten that far into uncrack, you know, into cracking, you know, Tony's psyche and where this is all coming from as much as they have in this episode. Yeah. And for me, it's a shame that in the end, the lesson that he learns is about the ice cream with AJ. Yeah. That's what he takes from history yeah. and from reflecting on his childhood. Well, and he says, like, I'm supposed to tell you that my father ruined my life. Um, they talk about how, like, you know, does she... He wants AJ to be proud of him, but mm -hmm. not to follow in his footsteps. Yeah. Like that footsteps, rather. They they get into some really deep, yeah, philosophical issues in this one, and yeah. and I don't know. I respect her as a therapist in in this one in some ways, even though she's a little bit problematic. But she really like pushes Tony yeah. in this one more than she typically does. Yeah. So. Great episode. Yeah. Can't wait for more. We're like over halfway through wow. the season already. Yeah. 
I'm gonna keep on going. Next one is uh, Tennessee Moltisanti. We get, we get Christopher. That's a great episode. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, can't wait. That'll okay. be fun. In Thanks for end. listening. Thanks for listening. See you next time.